Welcome back, everyone, to Indy 3. It is late. It is already 10 p.m. for us. You know how late it is? It is officially too late to submit your game for inclusion in the Indie Game Showcase. Okay. That fair, is how late it is. Fair play. Fair play. <laughs> this is the last stretch. Uh, yep. It is, as you can see, right there in the bottom, it's 10 p.m. for us. And uh, this is the final stretch. We have uh, 15 more submissions and then three more at the end that are very special to me that I want to uh, show off at the end. Um, so don't let me forget those. Uh, let's get started because uh, yeah, I'm just exhausted. <laughs> I'm, at, I'm at that point of the night where I'm just like, I'm crashing. Uh, but I'm going to get a second wind soon. So, haha, -ha, bodies. Um, Sirius Online is the game that I'm looking at right now. I'm going to actually jump up to the top because this uh, splash is cool again. Um, but uh, Sirius is all about, it's a game, seriously. Think about Freelancer now. Add the third dimension into the content. Speed it up and add cool fluff stuff like scanning for belts and deep space exploration. We're talking about space. We're doing space stuff. Um, and this is a this is an ambitious project that started in 2005. Like, let that sink in a little bit. Um, 2000. I'm trying to think what I was doing in 2005. Mm-hmm. Uh, these kinds of uh, long-form labors uh, are are so just important for for what we do. Uh, game. Some games have been developed for a day. Some games have been developed for a week, uh, months, years. In this case, decades. And so oh, I... Plural might be stretching it a bit. Decade. I remembered what I was doing in 2005, though. Do I, was, do I want to know? I was organizing eight-player uh, eight Mario Kart Double Dash tournaments in my college gaming club. Oh, baby logical. I know, right? You think that might have a little bearing on what I'm doing these days? Maybe a little bit. Start small, everyone. Yep. Smart. Start with Double Dash. Yes. Uh, anyway, uh, Serious. Serious Online. This is an online game, too. So, like, seriously. Uh, let's show off Serious. And this is a long trailer. And for a game that's been in development for this long, I really do want to give it the full six and a half minutes of the trailer.
That was Play Serious. Uh, sorry, wow. that was Serious Online. There's a lot going on in that one trailer. And, uh, like, I mean, it doesn't seem like, what can you do now besides fly around? Uh, that's the sassy comment, obviously. Uh, but the, it's not just about, like, that you can just fly around. It is that, that understanding of 3D space that's... Uh, put into the game so cleanly and so efficiently um and all of these other uh parts to it i want to know more about uh how how much is this still in development it looks like i mean june 9th 2014 um that there's the version that's out right now that you can download right now um and all of these other parts to it uh I'm understanding this is also this kind of like online game. I'm not sure if that means that it's uh, an, um oh it's a LAN multiplayer. And that's kind of the plan. That's the the point of where they're going with it. Um but I mean I'm actually I was quite captivated by watching him, you know, push boulders around with lasers um cuz it's I mean it's just kind of like all of those parts of Star Wars but in that that are like really evocative uh, where you're flying through space in a spaceship and it's just you um, and you have these lasers that are doing this very uh, exciting like choo choo uh, but it's also this like very meditative uh, going through space which is like what we uh, kind of romantically think of as space anyways um, and those themes kind of put together and having all the lights sw <laughs> like moving around you and the dynamic ways that they move uh, really did bring that whole experience together um, and into this kind of meditative space where it's like, all right, even if it is just flying around and shooting rocks around, like this is the coolest way I've ever seen someone move around space and shoot rocks around. So, duh, <laughs> that's so cool. And uh, just that it's it's been in development for so long, There's there's got to be just so many stories involved in that. Um, but you can find it on Indie Database, so IndieDB.com, which is a fantastic resource for anybody who's making games. Um, but it's called Sirius. Uh, Sirius, there's this tagline. Uh, Sirius Elysium. So thank you guys, and I'm glad that we got to spend a long look at that because uh, it, it just means a lot to understand uh, these works that are made in a long, long stretch of time. And what, how, where they come from, what they do, and so there's a lot of cool stuff that's going to be there. Uh, the next one uh, by Mutlu Creative is called "A Life Worth Dying." F uh, yeah, a life worth dying for. And so, uh, remember the sequence to recall my memories. They say that moments before you die, your whole life flashes before your eyes. But what if it doesn't? was a really cool trailer that was really really cool in just a very short amount of time uh obviously this is a, a game that's on ipad and ios uh it's called life worth dying for by mutlu uh was that mutlu games oh where did we go uh mutlu creative i knew that was a little different can um, i say what i like best about it please in that trailer mm -hmm. you start out with the the very abstract opening of the trailer with kind of definitely illustrated graphics and then it's like look at the memories and all of a sudden we're seeing video of people's very personal private moments mm -hmm. those kind of cherished memories and the juxtaposition there really caught me off guard and it was actually really powerful I, was cool. I absolutely agree because the framing of the introduction is just a guy falling and you're like okay I've seen this so many times in 
whether it's games or media at a, at a wider side. And then the juxtaposition between the graphics of the game or uh, this this graphical character and then these video images and these video snapshots of life, of moments of life were captivating. Um, and uh, if, I, if I may be so bold to use the creator's own words, um, oh, we can also watch a little gameplay. Um, but uh, we're recalling through these memories and uh, this game was inspired by uh, the creator's fear of dementia, a mental illness that can cause permanent memory loss, and then their fascination with the end back task, a mental exercise that's supposed to have magical powers. According to a controversial study, it can make you smarter. Uh, Ooh, so it's it's about the dual end back test. Yeah, this is something I actually know a little bit about. If you'd like to explain that, ah, uh, it's it was something I've read about. I haven't tried it myself, but. It is a particular kind of puzzle which stretches certain capabilities of human memory and recall. And as you get better at the test or at the the skill, you you literally improve your mental flexibility in dealing with keeping more things in your mind at once as you solve problems. So that's actually that's a real thing. So right now we are looking at uh, the gameplay trailer uh, and seeing just kind of how this plays out, this idea of remembering memories uh, and whether these graphics, the the uh, short clips are like a reward or somehow in, integrated into uh, the content of the play itself. And so that's what I'm really, really excited to see. And I love the the lighting on this character is really good. You're you're seeing it falling through the sky, and then like as it elucidates on this memory, uh, the eyes light up, and you can like see this kind of like uh, they have some kind of clarity that they've witnessed, like right there. Uh, it's just very a great use of color, and there's so much cool stuff going on here. Um, but you need to go check that out. You need to go look at that right now. Uh, oh, there we go. How to play. Tired. Happy. Tired. Tired, angry, rude, sad. So much more information. Um, so obviously, uh, I believe the the first guess was right that these video clips are are part of the contextualization of the character falling uh, out of space and a very very cool reward for matching things up correctly. Um, and so it's all about remembering what happened two steps back uh, in a, like a, a sequenced order in two dimensions. So one that is adjectives and one that is positioning. Uh, so it makes perfect sense as a as a mental exercise, and I'd like to understand more about the efficacy of that. And uh, also, I just love the, the uh, videos that they pull from. That's really cool. Uh, so that's a life worth dying for, and their use of uh, different media and pulling from different media to evoke a kind of relational response absolutely brilliant and we need to do more of that so thank you guys uh, all the people at mootloo creative for bringing that to us the next game that we have is called pixel 
Are You Squared? And you can find it at areyousquared.com. And so they have uh, this, they have a playlist of eight videos. I didn't realize that this was all in a playlist. Howdy, folks. But um, I actually don't know which one I want to pick. Uh, I think I actually want to see it in action. That was a fun way to watch that. <laughs> uh, go back to the the website. I just love this background that's got they've got going on. Um, but uh, Pixel, are you squared? Uh, has so much going on. They're they're exploring all of the different ways that you can do this uh, platforming kind of game uh, and puzzles in a very very small concise way. Um, and so now that we're in screenshots, we can kind of see we have. Um, a whole bunch of different things going on at once. We have a, a status meter up here. We have some kind of uh, score in the negatives or positioning uh, identity. Um, we have all of these objects strewn about that have some kind of informational quality to uh, where we're at in the level. And then I believe this is a some kind of map interface or something of the sort. Uh, <laughs> kind of uh, just asking questions about it. But um, all of these parts are coming together to explore a maze. And this is a very, very simple construct that uh, we use all the time in different kinds of game design um, to uh, kind of explore digital spaces around us. Uh, but I love the ways that this is evoked and all of the colors that are used are so cool looking. And it just looks gorgeous with uh, all of these things going on and uh, all the different flavors in it. So we have like this background texture uh, that has its own pixels that it is built up out of. Uh, we have the walls that have an entirely different style of texture. They're very uh, uh, faded out and pastel. Um, and we have like these doors that seem like uh, they can be movable or move throughable in some sort of way or activated. Um, you have your square all at the center, which is uh, very helpful for us to understand what's going on. Um, and then there's these extra little bits that I have no idea what they mean. Uh, but they look like candy, and so that makes me happy. Uh, so this is a game. Let's see. Uh, we can find more information on where to grab it. Uh, it is 40% off on an early pre-order sale, so you can get your copy right here. They have it. <laughs> Just go to the website. Just go to it. It's too much fun. You can greenlight it on stream, on Steam. You can light it on, like it on Facebook, and you can uh, plus up won it on Google Plus uh, and make friends with it. But okay, so this is 40% off on Desera, so you can grab it right now for $10. Uh, and that's so, so cool. And obviously that was uh, ChargerCon from Huntsville, Alabama. So ups to them for putting on a great show too. That show looked like it was a blast to be a part of. Um, so I actually want to get a little bit more about it. It's a game that's a combination of a platformer, a shooter, and a puzzle game. Gameplay features color theory-based puzzles and combat mechanics and gravity manipulation-based puzzle platforming mechanics. 
Uh, I'm most excited about this color theory side of it because that's what we're evoking with these uh, units that we commonly call pixels. Uh, they are all different colors and evoking this kind of color theory where they overlap and make new shades. Um, so there's a lot of simple systems stacked on top of each other, which is kind of what we were noticing with the maze system with these, this uh, character jumping up and down and around and then having the maze flip on us in a lot of different ways. Um, so all of those combined make this very, very cool uh, experience. Colorblind mode for everyone who sees the world differently. And stereoscopic 3D mode. Uh, all sorts of different ways to see this game. Um, so that's very, very cool. And I really want to thank the people for submitting this to us. Uh, Pixel, are you squared, everyone? Right, this is uh, another game that was submitted. This is the only, uh, this is a work in progress. And so this is a gift that was submitted to us uh, for a game called Apartment. And the gift that we have, I think really does evoke that idea of the apartment. We have the character, the player character here standing in the middle of the room, um, or some kind of character with some cool uh, bro-yo hair going on. And uh, they look delicious. And they have the... Uh, Laptop that is glowing in the background as the lights flicker on and off. Uh, just a, <laughs> it's just a gif. It's just a gif to evoke this idea of apartment. Um, and I want to give love to the creator of the game, um, which I believe is Sean Martins. That's who it is. Um, so Sean Martins, thank you for providing us this gif of your game called Apartment. And I'm excited to see where you go with it. Uh, and thanks for being a part of Indie 3. Uh, I'd love just uh, just to give a little more attention to some of the details in this. Uh, you have the shadows of uh, the tables and the desk lamp, uh, sorry, the, <laughs> the tables and the chair, as well as all of these other shadows that are just really, really gorgeous and well placed in here. Uh, if you've ever worked in RPG Maker, these are not necessarily the easiest things to do. And so they're, they're really cool to see them here like this. Um, and I'm not saying if this is an RPG Maker or not, but... Uh, the uh, the RPG Maker system itself, I can speak for that, and that this is a difficult thing to do, and it looks great. It looks so cool. So everyone, that is apartment. Next up, hi guys. Uh, next up, we have Once Upon a Light, and this is by this is also Guru Med Meditation Project. Uh, we heard from Guru Meditation Project earlier, and I'm gonna quickly look up why what what their thing was. I just remembered that I recognized that name. Um, it was the Weavers, right? We looked at the Weavers earlier, and that was also a really, really impressive game um, by the people at Guru Meditation Project. I believe... What the f uh, oh, that was the one that was inspired by... That was the Hinduism-inspired uh, game that we showed off. And so I'm very excited to see where they're going with Once Upon a Light, which I believe is in a completely different world and universe. Um, so let's check it out. The character is adorable. I just want to stop it right there. Okay, let's let it. There we go. <laughs> That's Once Upon a Light by the Guru Meditation Project. Uh, so it's a it's a puzzle game, right? You've got this puzzle game that's going on, and uh, let me bring you back to the um, where is it? There we go. Uh, where you're shooting electricity all over the place. You were shooting it on this kind of two-dimensional plane and ricocheting it around to power objects in order to solve the puzzles. And so... I'm having very good flashbacks to The Incredible Machine. Yeah, that's a great one to throw yes. out. Um, and yeah, like The Incredible Machine, you have uh, mechanisms that you are powering 
uh, to make more mechanisms happen. And it looks like in this one specifically, uh, or we can go to this one, sure. Uh, there are also enemies that get in your way and other things, and you are trying to, uh, looks like, escape to the other side of the of the room somehow. Um, and so, let me see, there's a... We have all of these. We're playing as Eddie Einstein. Um, and this is, okay, cool. This is what I was looking for. This is on the Apple Store, on the Google Play Store, and on the Amazon Store. So you can get this for all of your... Uh, mobile devices. And so that's really awesome. Uh, I really thank the Guru Meditation Project for bringing us not just one, but two games to ND3. Uh, and that's really, really cool, and that means a lot to us. Um, so thank you, you guys. Speaking of another uh, returner, um, we also had Silverway ga Games. Uh, they brought us Speedway Heroes earlier. So uh, I also wanted to show this. You can also now be horse, as well as car. So this was a, a racing game that we looked at earlier, um, where they had all of these different uh, really cool things going on, where they're uh, constantly judging you on how uh, far ahead or how stylized you are in your laps. Uh, so now you are 93% legit. Um, and okay, that horse is now 100% legit. Yes, yes. The the donuts make it even more legit, plus 11. Um, but it reminded us of Trackmania when we last played through this, and to see it again in this form is very funny and very s silly and fun. Um, but it's uh, it's really cool that they, they brought us another trailer for... <laughs> For Indy 3, for, uh, that has the horse involved. <laughs> oh no, don't get run over, horse! There you go, there you go. You guys can dance together. It's like Moonwalker, right? You start dancing and the bad guys have to start dancing too. Yep. Except the bad guys are cars and you are a horse and not <laughs> Michael Jackson. Eh, you know, the similarities are there. You know, cars, zombies, Michael Jackson, horse. Actually, I no, those aren't similar at all. There's nothing similar about that. Oh, it's, what is going on in the left side? Is it a painted horse? Adorable. <laughs> Great use of horse, Speedway Heroes. Thank you, guys. Um, moving on, I want to show off Old Fogey Games. Hey, Old Fogey Games. We're going to show off Warp Zone. Uh, I need to see how how new is this video. Oh, this was just posted a couple uh, less than a month ago. Uh, it's an impossible space adventure where you could win a hundred dollars by playing the million dollar uh, the million parsec challenge. Uh, but that's an Android game that you can download called Warp Zone by Old Fogey Games, um, and that was really really cool. There had um, I I mean like most of the trailer itself is full of this challenge. Uh, this meta game where if you win the uh, if you get this high score that you can also then uh, win some actual cash and so uh, it's kind of a, a cool way to incentivize people to play your game um, and is it's funny it's it's like that's a that's a funny thing to to put into you as being part of your game and uh, I hope you guys actually go and try that million parsec challenge it sounds very difficult but at the same time, uh, it seems like this is kind of the uh, side-scrolling, uh, top coming top-down runner, um, where it's it's auto moving you up, and you are avoiding stuff to get a million parsecs, up to a million parsecs, um, and you're trying to travel as far as you can. Uh, but you're also picking up collectibles, and that's a that was a key part of it. Um, let me show you that. There you go. 
Um, you can use diamonds and gold to purchase better ships or shields. And so there's kind of this uh, transaction movement going on there. I'm wondering if you actually purchase better ships or shields with real money. I think that would be the, the ultimate play. Um, but that's fun. That's, that's kind of cool. I'm glad that you guys are able to... Uh, I'm glad that we're able to show off Warp Zone as part of Indie 3. So thank you, Old Fogey Games, for supplying that for us. Um, the next game that we have, I'm actually really, really excited about this game because it looks so cool and their site looks amazing. Uh, this is called Airships by, uh, by Zarkonin. Let's show the Assault on Cat Bridge. Hi, I'm David Stark, and this is my game, Airships. It's just been released as an early access version, and I'm going to show you a bit what you can do. It's a game about designing and fighting with steampunk airships. So let's start a new game. You can choose what kind of um, coat of arms you want, and different coats of arms give you different bonuses to what your site can do. So this is the main map. Let's start out by building some airships so we can go and conquer some other place. I'm going to choose Cat Bridge down there because uh, it's got quite a nice bonus which I will get once I've conquered it. I will get cheaper wood. Let's build two of these HMS Mutilators which are airships equipped with short-range grenades pretty effective at early combat. Once they're both built, I'll send them over here to Capridge. I also started out with one small ship called the HMS Squamous. Setting up the combat at the start, positioning the ships, and now we're in. So I immediately want to move my airships quite close to the defensive buildings so they can actually shoot their grenades. Unsurprisingly, you, you know, uh, you can't throw grenades very far. Uh, this edge is mutilated here. Oh, okay, that didn't go so well. That just caught fire and died. That's now unarmed. Not much use. But the other one's doing pretty well and is doing serious damage to these buildings. Ah, oh, but no, it's been destroyed as well. So we're just left with the HMS and Squamous up here, which was comparatively safe. I'm mm, going to try and reposition these HMS Mutilators a bit and see if I can ram something. Okay, yeah, that was pretty good. That uh, took out a bunch of these cannons, but uh, still the fight's going against me. And I've just lost. So that was my first attack in Capridge. Slinking back home with my one remaining... HMS Mutilator, what's left of it. The first thing I want to do is refit the ship because it's not got any guns anymore. So let's uh, put the corridor back on. You can see this is the ship editor. And let's uh, put some cannons on this time instead of grenades. Rebuilding the ship to have these cannons attached again. Then I'm going to build some more ships and see if I can't conquer Capridge. Okay, don't have enough money yet. I'm going to have to wait for a little while. Get uh, some more money about once a second from Storm Ness, my original city. And now I can build an HMS Mutilator. So each um, city you conquer gives you more income can build more ships and also gives you some kind of bonus. Um, more technology, cheaper or better tools and so on. Right, here we are. Second attack. So I'm just pausing the game at the start so I can give some commands. Gonna tell this grenade equipped HMS Mutilator to move in close so you can hit. This one I'll put close so it doesn't have to be too close now because it's got guns. Okay, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Making short work of that smaller tower there at the back. Okay, this time I'm going to tell them to focus on firefighting. So um, if any fire starts, they'll concentrate on putting them out again, which will hopefully let them survive for a bit longer. Certainly uh, that tower over there is uh, pretty bad on fire now, so I think I'm winning this fight. 
moving closer yet? Oh yes, oh yes. So it does seem to be that Catbridge is mine now. Let's zoom in for the gloating and ah, the victory. So yeah, that's the strategic mode in airships. I'm going to pillage Catbridge and add it to my empire. Well, thank you for watching and uh, yeah, by the game. And by the game, the punchline at the end of that was, that is the strategic mode of airships. And that looked amazing. Uh, Zarkonon, Zarkon, Zarkonin, uh, thank you so much, David Stark, for presenting that. Uh, there was so many cool things. We don't have enough uh, um, strategy games. We don't have enough strategy games within our, our uh, all of the, our archive of Indy 3. And so to have that on there and to have such a cool, like, the assault on Catbridge. Poor Catbridge. They didn't deserve that. <laughs> but uh, we're not them, so it doesn't matter. Ask me some time about the Battle of Gug. <laughs> the Battle of Gug. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, no, it's like, the, I mean, even going off of that, your your Battle of Gug story, These are this is a game about building stories of uh, great and epic victory. Um, and the ways that it formats that, we have an overworld map, you have a setting up map, and then you have the action as it plays out in real time. All of those different systems work together to like build this story that you have a lot of control over. And it was just so impressive. It was absolutely impressive to see all of those on display at once. Um, so you had like you're outfitting your ships and your own defenses and protecting yourself on the uh, on the outer layer and then you go on a campaign to attack someone and so you have that layer and then you do the attack and you execute on that attack and that's a whole different layer and all of those worked really well together to kind of create this very cool effect and then even on the layer on inside of that the attacking itself you had the little guys running around and that was probably the coolest part was when we zoomed in and there was like actually little people manning these ships instead of it just kind of being this like disembodied floating thing that exists and uh it got like super like faster than light ftl really fast and in a really impressive way i'm going to say i think that having people in your warships like that is actually really important and i can hold off at length but i will spare our, our viewers that conversation <laughs> <laughs> i know i know you have a very soft spot in your heart for airships yes airships if there's airships plus Floating islands, I'm in there. Awesome. Uh, well, all right. Uh, so that was airships, and you can find more at, if I can hit the back button, uh, zarconin.com backslash airships. So, uh, again, there's so many parts that are going on to this, and uh, we could have also watched the trailer, but I actually really liked that Assault on Catbridge video as well. Um, and so there, there might even be many, many more secrets to airships that, um, that I'm not exploring, and <laughs> all of this stuff looks so cool. Uh, guys, you gotta go, go play this. It's only five dollars. It's only five dollars. You design and fight with diesel punk airships. That's so cool. James, diesel punk airships. I, I hesitate to say too much lest I incriminate myself. <laughs> So uh, the next game that we have on our list, and we are almost all the way done with this list, is Amazing Soul Games' Alphone.
an adorable platforming game called El Phone by Amazing Soul Games. Uh, thank you guys for that. The cool thing that we were seeing in there uh, was probably the, the ways that they manipulate the player character being able to uh, not only ru uh, run and jump and walk on walls, but walk up the faces of the wall as well and uh, kind of just manipulate all sorts of different ways that you can jump around and stuff. Then there was that one huge jump. There's a, just suddenly a huge jump. Where did that come from? I, I wonder. I have no idea where that came from or what other ways we can take that too. Um, I really, what I was uh, really seeing in there was um, all of their backgrounds and all of their art assets for the, the objects of the, um, that you were climbing on were really well done and looked really cool and polished and fun. Um, and it definitely invited you to like climb all over me. It's like a big jungle gym. Uh, and you get to be the, the little, it was like, it was, I think it was like a kid. Like you got to play as like a young kid instead of having like being this kind of like big macho man has to save the world. Uh, but like a kid who's in a point of position where they can try and save the world. And that seemed kind of empowering, kind of cool. Uh, so Alphone, you can catch that, uh, you can catch more info on that. Uh, at Amazing Soul Games. Um, they have... Oh, uh, you can follow them on Twitter, too. Amazing SG Studio is their Twitter handle. Um, it's still in progress, and so there's much, much more to come. And if you're interested in looking at more from Alphone, you can go to Amazing SG Studio on, on Twitter. Uh, or fa uh, Facebook also has Amazing Soul Games. Facebook.com backslash Amazing Soul Games. Um, so moving along, thank you guys for that, for submitting that. We have the uh, Dr. Slouch and, uh, oh, no, Gnost Gnostic Slouch, Gnostic Slouch has provided this specifically for us at Indie 3, and I'm honored to be able to host this for you guys. Indie 3 exclusive. Because, uh, I mean, like a week ago, this wasn't even a thing that existed. Uh, almost, what, eight days ago, nine days ago now? Um, so, yeah, thank you guys. Holy crap, guys. Holy crap. <laughs> that was Sacred Ground uh, by Gnostic Slouch. Uh, well done. The pixel art, and that was amazing. Did you guys see that? There was so much there. Uh, so you're doing this, like, adventure game where you're playing uh, as the lone adventurer wandering the, the wilderness. But then you have... Uh, so this... The uh, description is just so modest. I need to tell this to you. The trailer for a game that I and two other friends are working on called Sacred Ground. Just a short teaser trailer of some areas. And there's going to be media gameplay showing more in just one or two months, hopefully. Anyway, enjoy a small trailer. Um, let me see. There's got to be... Hopefully, it's a place where we can find more information on where to find uh, more about Sacred Ground. Uh, but, the like, how amazing that pixel work was and how textured and nuanced it was. Let me just show you... Uh, this was the scene that had me going uh, right here where you have, uh, if you can flick it to me, James, you have the, uh, the walls going here, the ground going here, and the different textures between the different ground parts um, just so well put together and looks gorgeous and so uh, simple of a UI. Like, all of these parts are coming together to make this really beautiful hole, and I love it. I love it. Thank you guys for submitting that for Indie 3. And just for being a part of everything, uh, it's really, really cool, and I can't wait to see more of this.
So I believe we have about five more of this of this batch. Um, I'm gonna get right into Haunt the House, and this is available right now on PC, Mac, and Steam. <laughs> Haunt the House. That was Haunt the House by SFB Games. Uh, I got that right, right? SFB, not S... I'm going to get that right. <laughs> Sorry. Just want to make sure I get it right. Um, Where was it? I just saw it. Uh, there we go. SFB. That's right. SFB Games bringing us Haunt the House. A terror Town. Um... So, obviously, it's a game that you can play when you hate your noisy neighbors. And you're like, I just want to go to sleep, guys. And so, then you haunt their house. Uh, the the character's just so adorable. And, like, I like they seem kind of like this just sleepy ghost. They're not being malevolent or, like, vindictive. They're just like, all right, time to float around the house and freak everyone out. And so I can go to bed. <laughs> like, just going about their business being a spooky haunting ghost. So if you want to play as a spooky, haunty ghost, you can go onto Steam right now and download it. Um, and uh, it is available for Mac and PC, both of them. Um, and if you want just to find more information about Haunt the House in general, you can go to sfbgames.com, and they have all of the information listed there. Uh, speaking of SFB Games, they actually submitted two games, which I'm very happy to be able to host both of them. Uh, the second of which is called Detective Grimoire. It should be a very, very different kind of game. So here's the uh, trailer release for SFB Games. Or, uh, sorry, Detective Grimoire by SFB Games. I don't get it. Why would anyone come here by choice? We're talking about a creature that's lived in the swamp for over 60 years. That creature is our prime suspect. That thing is our murder suspect? He doesn't seem like a killing sort of creature. Nope. He's a different sort of creature. You're the detective, right? I'm a detective. If you're good at your job, you may have realized that it's kind of dead around here. Our murder victim. He was in charge of this, uh, tourist attraction. That man was a threat to the swamp. We'll be better off without him. Naturally, I've crossed paths with Remington a number of times. Good value, that one. The man was a fool. That's all you need to know. <laughs> That's a little rude. Maybe he'll see the light now and leave the swamp behind him. Maybe everyone will. Some things don't make sense straight away. You need to look a little closer. The swamp itself has a history that has captured many imaginations. For better, or for worse.
No, no, come on. How am I supposed to arrest something that might not exist? You've always enjoyed a challenge before. That little girl is too stupid for my beard to be so smart. No, oh, that doesn't make sense, does it? Wow, there was so much cool stuff in there. So the Detective Grimoire is out now. You can like go get that right now. Uh, amazing adventure game, point-and-click adventure game with so many different puzzle aspects that are so cool and so fresh and amazing animation. Oh, I really, I wish that, uh, I wish Tess was here to see that because that was way cool. Uh, so uh, Detective Grimoire by SFB Games is out now and you can go get it. Uh, I mean, I think you guys saw that too. I would obviously, I highly recommend it. Um, but I just loved that part that they were showing off at the end where you're putting pieces of the puzzle together uh, and in a way that asks questions. And so you are helping the detective grimoire uh, reveal the answers before you. Um, sometimes in detective games, you're kind of at the whim of uh, the character itself kind of figuring things out as it's going um, or as, as they are going, whether it's like a Phoenix Wright kind of game where you're just kind of tripping across the answer. Uh, but here it's like, at least before they figure it out themselves, you are posed a question or you are you help create a question to be posed. And that's really, really cool and elegant how they managed to put that together. Uh, and it's also a fun toy that you can play with uh, to make Detective Grimoire say silly things. Um, but it's really well put together and that's very fun. So uh, thank you so much, SFB Games, for submitting to Indie 3. And like, that's just so cool. Your games are so cool. Wow. <laughs> that dialogue construction system seems really, really clever if it plays out as well as I think it could. I absolutely agree, right? I was like, oh, this the visuals here are really pretty, and this voice acting is amazing, and the music is great, but how's the gameplay? And then I saw it, and I'm like, okay, you got me, guys. It puts them all together. You got me. It put all of those things together. It's like, you know what? What are we good at? We've got some great sound design. We've got some great animation and some... Uh, great uh characters let's put them all together in this nice elegant uh puzzle solving crime solving uh system of asking uh questions about the mystery it's like all right got it done well played well played um so right now we are looking at this is dev-zoo.net uh this is enyo arcade a teaser trailer for enyo arcade All right, so you've been warned. There's blinking and disturbing content. Told us nothing. Love it. I I really love the the trailer though. Um, that was really cool. Even though I'm not exactly sure what to make of it, <laughs> but having watched the trailer, I know that I like it. Um, let's check out these screenshots though. Uh, sub pixel action arcade uh, action adventure. There we go. Now we're seeing some forms that uh, we may be familiar with, with our pixel character. Uh, in a kind of platforming style maze and architecture uh, and all of these health bars and stamina bars and uh, blue colored bars kind of energy of some sort um, some times and some currencies but here's the website right there by the way at uh, dev-zoo.net dev uh, if you are also as excited and confused as we are um, that's where you can find more information whoa where are we going this a oh there we go we can pick through all of these so we've got a uh, grappling style of game some bizarre sub pixel action arcade um, it seems like there's a lot of things going on uh, that it's not just like one thing but many different things 
And so I, I just need to keep l clicking links and hoping I can like learn something more. starting to see a lot more of the dynamics going into the game and it looks gorgeous all of the the art that's going into it um, and I love this creature up at the top that is uh, seems to be emitting uh, some kind of like rainbow bouncing slug thing um, that just like the this idea that we have this uh, like almost plant-like structure that is emitting these little creatures that are jumping around the stage are just really cool and how they interact with all of these uh, bits and pieces as they land on them and stuff. Um, be brave, but never senseless. This uh, video is titled The Meat Grinder. So you can go to the green light page and follow this, uh, follow the project and how it is going on. Um, and you can use this link if you have Steam installed to take you right there. Cool. Um, but yeah, this is a full-fledged adventure game that is uh, just exploring these different play spaces in a very dynamic way that I think is, is really cool and important. Um, so you can go play the demo of it right now. You can go to uh, check out Enyo Arcade and play the uh, downloadable version of it, version 0.8. Uh, I like the note, we haven't even really noted this a lot, but it's like, this is still an unfinished game, so please don't break it. <laughs> the appeal from the, the creator. All of the games that we've been showing are so uh, intimate to the creators who are making them, and I really like what Enyo Arcade is, is doing and how it reflects like the creator's spirit in a very personal way um, as like this very flashy and vibrant... Um, but also vital and living and like wanting to move and be uh, living in this bigger world. Uh, that, that's important and that's cool. And so thank you, Enyo Arcade and the, uh, and the Dev Zoo for bringing that to uh, Indie 3 this year. Um, yeah, I think that leaves us with uh, two more. This is a teaser trailer by Feline Studios, uh, and it's one hell of an Indie 3 teaser trailer, I've actually looked at this already, uh, called Not Brainless. I hear you're looking for something, and I may know just where to find one. It won't be easy, but will it? Be worth it. I want to pause it there for you guys to look at the. Uh, we can find more information at felinestudios.tumblr.com backslash not brainless. And oh, I thought I had that tab pulled up already. Um, but no problem. Oh my goodness, maybe there's a problem. <laughs> there we go, it's in the thing. So I've got a couple links here that are actually really cool that I want to show you guys uh, that come from where they're working on. So you got this, which is the teaser site. Uh, it says, not brainless, coming soon. Uh, so lots of hype. Uh, more importantly, like we've we've seen multiple times before, you can receive email updates on not brainless by clicking the link at the bottom. Um, and that that is something that is very, very useful for devs, uh, especially young devs, to kind of get a gauge on interest for their game. Um, please, please, I, I implore you to uh, help out the devs that have been a part of Indie 3 and to help each other out by uh, doing things like jumping on mailing lists uh, for these young uh, upcoming game designers. So Not Brainless has a really cool hype trailer and a cool hypes website that I really like what they're doing. I have no idea what is going on with the game itself. However, I do have 
this uh, state of development timeline, uh, it might be a little hard to see, but uh, this is the tables. Uh, this is where that this uh, the project is being worked on right now. Um, the designer, the the person who's working on it, the developer, uh, they are um, a game jam type person, and so uh, they are taking this in a to do list sort of way, in a very cool looking way. And we can already see that it's 45% done. We can see which parts are uh, marked off of the to-do list and what parts are left to do. So sound is the, the thing that is being worked on for not brainless by uh, by the, the group. Um, and so, yeah, Feline Studios, thank you so much for submitting that to us. And I know it came in very, very late. And so I'm glad that I was able to show it off uh, in the time that I did. Um, we have one more, is this one more game? Yes, yes, one more game as part of the Indie Trailer Showcase. And then after that, I promised that I would have uh, three uh, games that I was going to play because they were submitted um, and the, the creator wanted them to be a part of this. So um, this is Facade, and this is the last trailer. It's a five-minute <laughs> five trailer, and uh, I'm very excited to see this because this looks very, very cool. So for everyone here, for everyone, Indie E3, Facade. So to talk about some of these uh, things that we're exploring in Facade, oh, is that just, oh, no, it's, uh, it ends up, uh, had the black at the end of the trailer, so it was uh, supposed to be two minutes. Um, so with Facade, uh, we have a game that has a whole bunch of stuff attached to it, too. So you can go to facade.so uh, to find more information about where Facade is coming from and, and where it is going. Uh, but it's a game that is has a long development cycle and has some very cool-looking stuff going on. Um, so they are now on Steam Greenlight, and they've uh, entered their closed pre-alpha, which is really cool. The trailer that we saw was an even earlier form uh, that it was taking uh, than these screenshots and stuff, but you were seeing a lot of those effects that they're trying to uh, create with the game. Um Oh no, that's okay. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is manipulating all of these uh, different forms of kind of those three-dimensional block puzzle games, uh, but in a lot of different spaces than than what we usually see. Um, and I love the way that you're kind of like apparating a lot of physical objects within space uh, and manipulating them through space in a very fluid way. Uh, it's like, it's robotic, but it's also kind of like magical. 
So, uh, yeah, I think that's what I have um, for the Indie Showcase. And that is that is Facade. You can find more at facade.so. Um, so, yeah, thank you guys for, for submitting that. Uh, it's a first-person puzzle adventure game by Zelcon Games. Thank you, Zelcon Games, specifically, uh, for putting that together for us. Um, so that brings us to the end of all of the trailer showcases. Um, all that I have wait, wait, left. Wait, 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 wait. How would what? How would what? How would We apparently have received one last submission. Well, I'll, I'll check the email then. This yeah, let's take you, a look. What are you doing to me, do, man? Do we feel generous? Oh, are you talking about Blue MC? I'm talking about Sky Forts. They're Sky Forts? Uh, I think. Where do I find talking this? Talking with Rachel. Look in the email. Apparently it came in about 9 p.m. <laughs> okay, okay. No game left behind. No, no, no. We've already looked at Corn on the Cop. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not finding it. Did it fall into the spam folder? Hmm. <laughs> Let's see. Where am I going with this? I'm going to search for Skyfall, you said? Fort. Fort. Sky Fort. Oh, there it is. There it is. Hey, we found it. Wow, we're just going to sneak that right on in there, aren't we? I think we just did. <laughs> cool. Cool. Oh, uh, Blue MC's... Uh, Dev name is Sky Forts. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Thank there you. There we go. Thank you for that. Uh, then I'm going to check out Ghoul's Miner. I, I know you guys sent in three games, but I want to check out your, your newest one, the one that you're in the middle of developing right Ooh. now. Um, and so I want to see what kind of things that you are working on and making with Sky Fort, uh, as Sky Forts. Um, so we're seeing the, the grid based, um, you got a gem digging game. You're going to explore, uh, ooh, there we go. Now we've got some gifts. Gifts are the important stuff. That's the juicy stuff. There we go. Okay, so you are, <laughs> the the main verbs that are uh, requested are headbutting and stage rotating, which are the core mechanics of the game. So we are going to headbutt and uh stage rotate our way to victory and looks like try to uh, kind of mine our way into riches of some sort. <laughs> so we're trying to mine all of the gems without getting ourselves stuck somewhere and getting trapped. Cool. That is awesome. And we got some character representations. Guys, skyforts.tumblr.com. Go check this out with me. There's a lot of cool development things happening in there, too. So uh, if you want more information on, like, you know, how to make a game, um, there we go. Public prototype of Panic Room. Um, cool. It's cool to see the evolution of this game over time, too. There's so much amazing stuff happening here. Um, thank you, Blue MC, for submitting that. I know it was late, and I'm sorry that I uh, almost rushed it over. Uh, but thank you so much for submitting it while you could. Um, so, yeah. That brings us to the conclusion. I have what I have left is I have uh, three games that have somehow kind of been going in and out of the. Uh, sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not there, and but I found them. I found them, and so I want to just show off these games by zero x zero nine six one h, who has had a hell of a time getting emails through to us, mostly because Gmail receives this name called zero x nine six one h and thinks that it's spam. <laughs> and we're like, no, no, that's a person. That is not spam. It is Snowcats 2014. I'm going to pick the winter is coming. Oh, hi. It seems you've launched Snowcats 2014 for the first time. Good. I hope you'll have fun. Let me tell you first how to play this game. So the game is all about cats in the snow. We've opened the house only for a second, and our cats have run away and stuck into a snow labyrinth. Your mission is to pick them up and put them into boxes, because, you know, cats love boxes. The thing is, on the top of the screen is the weather indicator. It shows when the next snowfall will fall, 
Each snowflake increases snow level by one layer. Four snow layers become four layered ice block. So we have shovels. We have an elite shovel that uh, destroys a whole snow block, an ice axe, and an elite ice axe. So we can push snow around, destroy a snow block, destroy ice, and destroy an ice block. And I'm not going to forget to have fun. If you hold a cat, put it down to deal with snow uh, by choosing a tool. All right. Oh, I've already made quite a mess out of this. So let's see. Do we pick up a box or something? Oh, we take uh, take the cats out to the boxes. Let's see if I can dig into the snow a little bit. Oh, there we go. Oh no, I'm running out of steps! Uh, can't get rid of the ice? Oh no! Oh, I don't have access to these tools yet. Uh oh, I made an ice block. We cannot pick up two cats at once. I don't think I'm even going to save one. Oh no! A uh, cat, put down. Let's uh, see if we can bust our way out of this. There we go. Now come, cat. Let us let us fly. Yay! <laughs> we saved the cat and put it in a box. Cool, so it's a it's a puzzle game. It's a layered puzzle game. Or we need to capture our cats and keep them safe and warm before the snow falls. Oh no. Oh, uh cat, put down. Thank you. Ah <gasps> we found the ice axe in the snow. Perfect timing. Uh oh, I might need to find a different way to get to all of these cats because I need to I need to find a new exit, I think. There we go. Now we're managing space well. All that's left is the one cat. I think we've got this, guys. I can even switch to my cool ice axe and not do anything with it. Okay. There we go. Done! Cats! Cats saved! Yay! <laughs> we got Pudge, Sam the Cat with Eyebrows, Venus the Chimera, Pusheen, and Keyboard Cat. So just a... We had apparently a cast of famous celebrity cats, I guess. Uh, <laughs> right on! Um, so that's Snow Cats 2014. We also have, whoop, uh, this was made for Cyberpunk Jam, if it, did it open up? There we go. And so this, I believe, is a puzzle game about glitchy sounds and stuff. So we can use the right arrow. And we can return to the previous message with the left arrow. This is a schematic of the broken human brain neural implant. Your mission as a doctor is to fix this broken circuit and make it work again. How? Let me explain. We have neurons. And we are taking data sets and passing it to other modules with them. So we are connecting the flow, it looks like. We're going to fix this poor patient's brain from collapsing. So we have this kind of uh, transhumanist neuro network that we are building. I click on the adder module. Get some neuron outpo output. There we go. Now we're linking them up. Good. Done. 
done. And one more network to the end. And let's execute it. Hey, we restored it and it only took a minute. <laughs> okay. Whoa. So let's dive in. Let's see if we can just wing it. I think that these neurons can only go so far. I don't think we can just go straight across. Because this is... Oh! So we only have so many resources that we need to uh, bring into play. Oh, come on. Um, so we have nine, and we have two. And we need to... Whoa. Oh my gosh, there's so many different parts to this. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm sorry, brain. I can't get you to function like this. Okay, so we can delete stuff, and let's get rid of those. Um, but we need to get things to equal 18 and 11 through 9 and 2. So let's start by multiplying 9... delete this circuit somehow? Not quite. But if we can multiply 9 to 2 and have this come out to... Come on. 18? No, this has already got a circuit going into it. Oh dear. I seem to have mucked this whole thing up. <laughs> I, get, I get what I'm supposed to be doing, though. I'm supposed to be... Uh, kind of taking the numbers on this side and making them equal the number on this side by using... And that's uh, number one. Yeah? Number one. Oh, yeah. Number one. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this is Neuroide by 0X0961H. Um, and I, I would love to get into it more, but I just do not have the brain capacity for basic arithmetic right now. <laughs> Um, but I also have uh, just one last one to show you guys to close out the Indy E3 uh, Indy 3 showcase um, man this was for the sweet jam so all of these were different jam games inspired by different game jams um, and they all have so many different aspects to them so the last one was the cyberpunk one which makes sense for a lot of things and this one is for the sweet jam Oh, so that was a timed hack, and we're going to hack into the ATM for their Royal Candy Bank. Please insert your sweet Elite ID card. There we go. Maybe the password's one, two, three, four. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, so... Oh, oh, okay. So this is a puzzle game. So if I uh, type in, let's say, 1479, and we hit Enter, this says that we have matched... Uh, we have C... Is zero and M is two, and that means that you have guessed correctly zero numbers, and one of them's in the right place. Oh, oh, oh! Um, this means that we've guessed correctly two numbers, and none of them are in the right place. And meanwhile, we had guessed one number correctly, and it was in the raw, uh, right place the first time. And so the only number that we have the same. In, this, in a different position is 4. So the second number of this is 4, I believe. And that 1, 7, and 9 are none of the other numbers. So if I go 1, 8, 4, 2, 0. 
I still only have one matched, and now I'm very stuck. Oh, I can't use a number more than once. So now we've matched two. Oopsies, I'm getting way off track. Uh, three, four, eight, seven, eight. Three, four, one, nine. Uh-oh, I have more that are matched now. Um, but I think I'm just trying to figure out what the last number is. Is that right then? Three, four, six, nine? I just, think... just need to figure out the order. I th is that what it is? Is it the order that's wrong? Yeah, you've got four matches, but none of them are in the correct positions. Oh, okay. Thank you, James, for... Help me out there. Oh no. Um. There we go. Hey, we made a breakthrough. Uh oh, that's less of a breakthrough. Okay, so we have six, three, four, nine. Two of them are in the right place. And six, four, nine, three, two of them are in the right place. So the six is in the right place. And one of these other numbers is in the correct place, I believe. Oh, no. Oopsies. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so bad at this. Maybe it's not the six that's in the right place. Oh, never mind. I got it. <laughs> 1923. Canteens were withdrawn from your account. Please take your card. Take it. Just take it. Just take it. Just take it. Oh. Thank you. Hail the king. That is so cool. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Had I just gotten out of the security camera line of sight in time. Uh, but that was sweet resistance. Uh, another game jam game for the sweet jam. Um, I just want to thank everyone who has uh, submitted that we were able to get to uh, during our indie showcase. Um, let me get out of this real quick. Um, that is that is the end of all of the indie showcase that we have uh, for everything right now. Um, this is just something that we put together really quickly in response to uh, another event and just as like a kind of celebration and embracing of all gaming, uh, any kinds of gaming that we could get our hands on in a very short amount of time. It was just a pop-up virtual uh, conference, a virtual, uh, what is that, expo? Like a virtual expo of all gaming things. Um, and I just thank you guys for joining us. Uh, I've we've been doing this now today for almost uh like a full week, yeah. Yeah. A full week. We did this for 6 days and in half an hour it was going to go on to the 7th. Um we had so much support from so many so many people and we're going to do a big thank you another time um later once we get to the end of all of this, but I just want to thank you guys for joining us for the Indie 3 uh Indie showcase. This kind of became the primary content form that we took uh which i think is really fabulous because we've gotten to see so many cool games that normally wouldn't get this kind of spotlight and i've tried my best to kind of respect them all even in spite of uh like personal needs for uh being I, I even though i'm like very tired right now i still want to try to give every single game the the best that i can uh in the short amount of time that we have so um I don't have much else to say, but um, I guess just thank you guys for like joining us through this entire adventure uh, for all the ups and downs.